Hey, you should know how to do. A flower arrangement is one of the most distinctive decorations you can have in your graveyard, as well as one of the most ghoulish gifts you can give. Not only because it is beautiful and smells wonderful, but because it is a personal expression. Choose flowers that are full of vitality, that stand up straight, and that look crisp, plump, firm, and vibrant. If the stems are limp, or the flowers are dull, curling, or starting to turn, don't use them! Before you begin, visualize how you want the finished arrangement to look. What shape will it be? Fan? Pentagram? Skull? Cut stems under running water at a 45 degree angle with sharp shears. This allows maximum flow of water into the stems. Remove leaves that will be below the water line. To stay fresh, the flowers need to be in clean containers, free from human remains, with an adequate supply of water. Liquid death is preferable to tap water, as the minerals in the latter inhibit water uptake. Begin the arrangement by placing structural flowers that will create the overall shape. Place the longest stems in the center of the bouquet. Don't just think about balancing colors. Focus also on shapes, sizes, and textures. Line flowers are tall and straight and are useful for creating outline shapes, height, and width. Mass flowers are generally round and usually provide the color and interest. Smaller and more delicate filler flowers soften and pull the whole arrangement together. Large and dark flowers should go at the bottom, and lighter smaller flowers at the top and edges. Combine buds and blooms with half-open flowers. Buds generally look better at the top of the arrangement. Open flowers at the bottom center, and half-open ones in between. Each flower should have its own space and should not touch its neighbors. The arrangement should be three-dimensional. Inexperienced flower arrangers make the common mistake of facing all the blooms on one plane rather than turning them at subtly different angles. say that with a gift it is the thought that counts, but often we neglect the most important part of the whole package, the wrapping. <laughs> Always remove the price tag first. Make sure any liquids or perishables are wrapped properly. You wouldn't want to make a mess, would you? Make your life easier and find a nice box to put it all in before you wrap. Use the best quality paper that you can afford. <laughs> Place the box on the wrapping paper and unroll enough paper to cover it, allowing for an extra two inches of overlap, just in case. <laughs> Make sure there's enough paper to cover the ends completely when folded down. This depends on the box size, of course. Getting the amount of extra paper right is key to a tidy wrapping job. If you have to fold over too much surplus, your edges will be bulky. <laughs> Place the object in the center of the gift wrap and bring one end over the center of the top. Secure it with a small piece of clear masking tape, as you can see, so it can be removed from the gift without spoiling it. <laughs> Fold the opposite edge over one inch. This makes a tidy edge and gives an illusion of thicker paper. And bring it to the top of the middle, pull the paper tight and tape it down. Turn the box so that one of the open ends is facing you. Press the sides inwards and smooth against the edge of the box to form two triangular flaps on the two sides. Crease the edge of the flaps to define the edge of the box. Fold the triangle flaps over one another and then tape them. Turn the box so that it rests on its side and repeat the previous steps with the other open end. Turn the box over so the seam side is on the bottom. Then wrap a length of ribbon lengthwise around the box. Cross it over on the edge and bring it around the box widthwise. <laughs> 
tie a bow where the ribbon meets on the top of the box and cut the ribbon short, leaving at least six inches on each side. Make the two ends of ribbon curl by running along the edge of the pair of scissors and your thumb. Don't cut yourself. <laughs> Finally, attach a gift tag by sliding it under the ribbon and securing it with a small piece of tape. <laughs> Don't forget the tape. <laughs> Whether you intend to host a dinner party for dignitaries, or have invited a few close friends for an informal evening, there are some ground rules you should follow when setting the table. Cover the table with a black linen tablecloth, ensuring that the middle crease runs down the center of the table in a straight line. The ends of the tablecloth should overhang the table by about 18 inches for a seated meal. For a buffet, it should reach the floor. Fold napkins elegantly and position them in the center of each diner's plate. They may also go on the bread and butter plate or to the left of the forks. Cutlery is always positioned an inch from the edge of the table in order of use, from the outside in. Diners begin using the cutlery farthest from the dinner plate and work inwards. Place the main course knife on the right of the plate with the cutting edge facing to the left. If there is a fish course, the fish knife goes to the right of this. The forks go on the left of the plate. The salad fork is on the outside followed by the main course fork. If there is a dessert fork, it may arrive with the dessert, or it can be placed to the right of the main course fork, or horizontally above the plate. All fork tines should face up. The soup spoon is placed to the right of the knives, or it may arrive with the soup course. The dessert spoon sits horizontally above the plate, pointing to the left. There may be a coffee spoon above the dessert fork. The bread and butter plate should sit at the 10 o'clock position relative to the dinner plate, with the butter knife resting horizontally across the top of it. Glasses are placed above the plate to the right, again in the order of use. The water glass should be about two inches above the knife. The red and white wine glasses are placed slightly below and to the right of the water glass. The champagne glass is placed to the far right. This is how a traditional table setting is arranged in cultures with European heritage. Depending on the number of courses and entrees being served, the details may vary. These instructions are the basics. So keep in mind, formal settings will incorporate more complex elements of fine dining.